ladies and gentlemen, Nobel's chief scientist, Drew Major. Thank you. A couple years ago, Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer decided to ignore Nobel. They said, from now on, Nobel doesn't exist. They're dead. Don't even mention them as a competitor. Were they ever wrong? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my distinct pleasure and my great honor to introduce to you the number one star of 15 brain shares, an industry icon, a technical visionary, a networking legend, the father of netware, a man who actually walks on water, <laughs> Novell's most famous engineer and Valera's new chief scientist, the irreplaceable and irrepressible Drew Major. So when I first met Drew, here's a brilliant technologist, this guy that's the founder of the company, and it was as easy as talking to, to you today, just in the sense that what he was about was how do I build a company and how do I succeed and how do I get these ideas um, out there. I mean, we met in our, in our math class the first, I think it was the first day at BYU. <laughs> He was always great to work with. I mean, he was, he was number one, a good friend. Uh, and, and we just, we chose to work together because we enjoyed working together. Well, holy smokes, that guy was a pistol. The greatest programmer on planet Earth. That's how Drew Major was described to me by many of the colleagues at Novell. So we have an unbelievable heritage in this state of engineering talent, computer scientists, programmers and the like. And all of that kind of DNA stems back to Drew in a very strong way. There's Apple HLS, there's smooth streaming um, with Microsoft, there's other protocols. They all have DNA, so to speak, that relates back to this constant evolution of technologies that Drew's been had his hand in. Well, I think we're just seeing the beginning of the power of the, you know, the smaller devices. You've got a equivalent of a supercomputer of two decades ago sitting in your pocket, everyone, you know, in terms of what that can do and the power of, you know, the power of connectivity and connecting to things and having an open internet where anyone can innovate and, and a fairly open set of platforms in terms of Android and iOS for, for new programming and you know it's just I think it's still early on. That's Drew right? in a nutshell is Drew wants to innovate he recognizes that it's not where technology was 20 years ago it's technology today and where he expects it to be in 10 years. If I look 10 years down the road what I see is things more and more connected and I think networking is going to be, continue to be very fundamental to the future. He's very much an idea person. He, he's always thinking about new ideas or new, a new twist on how to do something a little bit different or, or to capitalize on a need that you know, he's perceived. But Drew, um, today, um, he's still at the company and he writes code every day. He's looking for new solutions, he's solving He's solving problems that, you know, eight years ago when we started, we're like, we've solved this problem, and we haven't. He's never satisfied with where we are, and he's constantly looking at ways of taking, again, same fundamental premise and improving it. Uh, Drew Major's contributions to this state have been incalculable, really. Because of his effort, because of his entrepreneurial spirit, because of his vision for the future, he was able to create a series of companies over time that built jobs for this community, for Utah County, for the state of Utah in general, and he was a real difference maker. It's, it's all, it's, you know, it's the power of the device, but also the power of the network and connecting it all together. And uh, there's still problems. I don't think video has, has really been solved that well yet. There's still stuff to do.
the drive isn't has never been just to make money for him at all. It's been to to do something, you know, to provide jobs, to but more to to do something to make the world a better place. I I I really believe that's one of the biggest motivations. Drew's kind of a person of of integrity. Um, you know, oftentimes in business, you've run people that are, there's always an angle. <laughs> Drew's angle is, is, I want to improve things, right? There is no other angle about Drew. He, he wants to build on things. He wants to make things better. And, uh, and he has a certain integrity to not only his thought process, but the way he handles people. Worked with a lot of great people. It was kind of fun. We started, you know, we were obviously younger. We kind of didn't know what we were doing, <laughs> kind of learning, you know. But uh, the opportunity was so big in front of us. Be passionate and work hard. And be honest, intellectually honest. Sometimes we think we have good ideas that, you know, you got to be real rigorous. You know, other people may have better ideas and be willing to accept that and, uh, and learn. And ultimately, you kind of have a good idea, you sort of build it, but you can't read, if it's a new idea, you really don't know how, exactly what the market needs until you build it. You can't tell the consumer, the customer, what he wants if he's never seen it. And so sometimes, you know, I, I don't know, no jobs was notorious in saying some of this stuff is, you know, we're envisioning things that the customer doesn't even know what to ask for yet. Because they don't, they've never, they have no experience on, you know, who would have known really that why should I connect my PC together? You know, well, we had to show them the value of it. And then of course, once you have that and then you gauge, engage with the market, sometimes, it's actually different than what you think. And so hopefully you've got the core thing, but then you're open enough to look at, well, actually, how do I take it to market? How does the consumer actually use it? But sometimes you have to have the product almost done and, and sort of go to the market once and realize it needs this and this and ought to be perhaps even radically refocused in this way to actually solve this different problem that you didn't know existed, but you wouldn't have known unless you came out with what you did. And so, you know, just having an ability to, uh, to change and, 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 but yet still be true to the core value that you've built. That's the, that's the challenge. He has a habit of rubbing his hands like, like that, uh, when, pacing and rubbing his hands like that, it, you know, because he's, it, you know, thinking or excited or whatever, and that, you know, it's a, he, you know, so he'll pace around, and do that, and you, you, you know, I can always, I always know when he's doing, you know, when he's pacing or when he's got a, new, you know, thinking about something because you hear. <laughs> <laughs>